In today's episode, we are talking about social media SEO. This is something that is only going to become more and more important in your strategy moving forward. So we're here to help you get going. Welcome to JFDI with the two Lauras. So recently we hosted a masterclass in our membership, The Inner Hub, which was all about social media SEO. So we thought it would be good to share some of that with you here on the podcast too. We are going to be talking about why you need to deep dive into this, how to actually do it, and three things that your social media SEO research can help you with. But before we get into that, we would love to hear from you. Where are you listening from? tag us in a selfie or take a screenshot, pop it in your stories. We are at the two Lauras on all platforms and we are very, very nosy. (laughs) So we really want to know where you're listening from. Are you in the kitchen doing the dishes, which is where I tend to listen to a podcast? Are you out walking the dog? Or maybe you are lucky enough to be sitting on a sunny beach somewhere. Wherever you are, let us know um, and tag us on socials. So we're diving into SEO on social media specifically. This isn't generic SEO. This is social media based SEO. So let's start with why then we want to talk about this. Um, Because I think we've mentioned on a previous podcast that social media SEO is one of those things that's going to kind of take hold more this year. People are going to get dive into it more. I think probably platforms are going to embrace that more. But why do we need it? You're right. We have talked about this on a podcast we also it was on the predictions for 2023 and also Matt Navarra agreed that it is important so just to kind of reiterate that point but people are using social media differently I know I am so this to me is like you know I'm nodding my head like yes this is this is true and in summer of 2022 someone from Google reported that 40 percent of young people go to TikTok to search for certain categories before they go to Google. That's like phenomenal. Like 40% of young people who are on TikTok, which is a huge amount of people, yeah. are using TikTok before they go to Google. Now, I am the same. because You told I'm, me the other day so about young. when you were looking for your wallpaper, you didn't yeah. look on Google, did you? No. And I wonder whether... I was try, I've been trying to think about this. I... I'm a visual person. So like if I was to do a search on Google for a product, I always search and then go to images. Very rarely do I scroll down just the normal Google feed from a normal search. I'm So I wonder whether that is maybe why I'm preferring to search on TikTok and Instagram and Pinterest in particular, because obviously they're very visual platforms. But I now search social all the time. If I'm looking for a holiday, I'll go onto their social, I'll search um, either the location, like the, the town I want to go to, or the hotels that I'm considering. I don't just want the brochure, the images from the hotel, but I don't want to go on TripAdvisor and see all the like... All oh, the people mm- moaning. Yeah. yeah. And so I think I see social media from that kind of travel perspective as that reality, but not like only the negatives of, of um, yeah. TripAdvisor. So I'm often doing that. I like the, just this um, last few weeks, I've been decorating one of the rooms in like my bedroom in, in our house. And I've, so I've, I've bought a lot of the stuff I have bought is because I found them through searching on social media. Now, I want to put you up on this because you told me something the other day that I knew I could do, but it blew my mind when you told me you did this. So this is when you were looking for your lampshades. Yeah. You searched on, did you say you searched on Instagram? I can't remember now. Go on, tell us the story. So I do this all the time as well. And I just assumed this is what we all did. So <laughs> I I was merrily scrolling away on TikTok. So I'd searched for TikTok for um lampshade a a ceiling light I can't remember what term I'd use but something along those lines and I'd seen loads of ones coming up that I quite like like I literally was sat watching all these bloody interior TikToks but that's fine because that's the kind of thing I like and then I saw them I saw these lampshades that I loved but it wasn't from a um it wasn't from a shop it wasn't from the brand. It was just in the back of someone's picture. Um, and it was an interiors picture, but um, so they hadn't said where they would get where they bought them from, or they were, so there was no tag, there was no easy way for me to go and link through to the brand. 
So I took a screenshot of the image, cropped it to just being the pic, the lampshade. I then searched using Google search image, image search. Reverse image search, I think it's called. Yeah, something like that. Is it? And then that told yeah. me where I could buy the lampshades from. So I bought them and wow, then they arrived so. two days later and they were in the sale. Bargain. That is so, see, that's amazing. But I do that all the time. I, like I just assumed everyone did that. I've done the Google image search thing, but I... It would never occur to me to go on a social media platform, search for a product and then do it that way. But that's because I personally definitely don't use TikTok, but I don't really search for products in that way yet. But I've done it on Instagram as well. Like I do on clothes, people who wear, who are wearing, you've got to, it's got to be a good kind of shot, but someone wears a nice jumper and I'm like, oh, I wonder where that's from. Take a screenshot. I'm totally doing that now. I do it all the time. When I renovated our downstairs a couple of years ago at our house, like probably I, I, the, the tap in our kitchen was done via that. Um, the stools in the kitchen, I, I'd use that method. This would have all been off Instagram as well. I don't think I'd have, I think the lampshades might be the first time I've ever managed to find something and be able to buy it. Because obviously there is the, the downside is it can pull up a lot of American yeah companies and that's but that's the same for like searching stuff like that on pinterest as well but i'm just trying to look in my kitchen now to try and see what else i uh i found see, um, i love this the ins- inner workings of how laura davis furnishes her house <laughs> tune in but, for more but also it's worth saying obviously that's one way of doing <laughs> why people, yeah. how people are using search and maybe i am the only person so do let I me doubt know it. but i suspect other people do do that but on the just on a very more basic less complex <laughs> way of doing it is that i was looking for um some wallpaper so I was looking for green textured wallpaper. I looked on Pinterest. I looked on Instagram. I looked on TikTok and I found them on social media. I then went on to Google and then because go- I'd found that um, John Lewis sold the one I wanted. So then I typed it into to Google, but I knew where I wanted to go then. Mm. But the kind of inspiration came from me searching And I think that's an interesting point before we get on to how to do this SEO is that you don't necessarily always see the link clicks from your efforts, do you, on social? Like you just said you found it, but then you went direct to Google to go and search Mm. for it. And with your like your screenshot Google reverse image search, the, the social media manager might not get the praise for that because it's invisible. Yeah, it's and I think that's very true of Instagram and TikTok, where there's, mm. you know, they they've only got that one link. Yeah, and to a point, uh, Pinterest now with their idea pins, although I think they're now you able to add links to those now or soon, but where the link isn't directly in that post, and they have to go to the link in the bio, and then they're going to have to go and find that product. I think people often don't go via the link in the bar. They just quickly jump over to Google and just type in whatever it is that they've yeah. they've discovered. Um, but if they weren't doing the work in the first place to make sure that that content was discoverable using yeah. the SEO things that we're going to talk about today, you never would have found that content in the first no, place. No. So it's really important to, to do it. And I think we just need to remember that more and more people are using search on social now. They're much more likely to search than they are to like to search for a term rather than search for like a hashtag or go and follow a hashtag feed. And if you or your business or your client's business isn't kind of showing up in those answers, someone else will be. Yeah. So you kind of want to just like, you know, you want to make sure you're there. And I think if you're in quite a competitive industry as well, I think even more so Mm. is this really important. You know, if you're a social media manager, there are a lot of social media managers out there. So when so that couldn't be quite overwhelming for business owners. So, yeah, so they are more likely to search a much more specific keyword um, to try and filter out the people who aren't relevant to them. So, you know, they might only want social media managers who are based in Solihull. So, you know, have you got that? If you want to work with local businesses and you're in Solihull, is that in your bio? Is that, are you creating content that talks about that? Yeah. So let's talk about then about how you can start to use social media SEO. I think one of the first things that you really need to think about and you need to be very clear on, actually the two things that are very aligned. Firstly is what do you want to be discovered for? But secondly, 
what is your audience actually searching for? Because Mm. those two things might not be the same. So let's say, for example, you want to be known as a social media marketer because let's face it, we all do marketing. We want to make sure that people understand the difference between a social media marketer and somebody who just goes and whacks a picture on Instagram. So you want to be known as a social media marketer, but your ideal client, when they go to search, they don't search for a social media marketer. They search for a social media manager. Mm. You need to know that. You need to know what your audience is searching for, because if you don't, then you can't optimize any of your content or any of your platforms. So what do you want to be discovered for? What is your audience actually searching for? And you can't do that unless you've done your research. What, 100%. Yeah. And I think that obviously that goes across the board with all marketing, but research is always so important. And when you're doing that research, you need to have your ideal client in mind, but you need to go and look on all of the platforms to see what people are searching on all of the platforms, even the ones you don't use, because some platforms are obviously much easier to carry out this research than others. So see what people are searching for, but also who's showing up under those searches and why? Why is that content showing up? And how can you use that research in in what you're creating? Yeah, and I think all of that is 100% valid and 100% advise people to do that. But have conversations as well. Mm. Like ask people what, you know, what would they call? What would they call you? Would they call you an, a social media manager? Or would they call you a social media marketer? Would they call you an ads manager? Or would they call you a... Uh, paper Facebook click. ads yeah. expert or yeah pay per click or um y- you know a meta ads manager like I still call myself a Facebook ads manager but just because I'm old school mm. <laughs> and it's so ingrained in what I do that you know 10 years of it I, it's just it's what falls you know and I, yes I know it's meta now so if I was to look for an ads manager I'd probably still type in Facebook ads manager Although yeah. I know it's meta now, I like I know that, but it's just probably not what comes first to hand. And is that the same for everybody? Another else? example of that actually is I had an old client who, and and I was doing their ads, and I'm a, I was a freelancer, but she would always tell everyone about the, this agency that she worked with. She knew it's only me, but yeah. she would always refer to my business as an agency. So you know, if somebody like that is looking for a freelancer, but they don't. They, they might not necessarily search for freelance. They might search for agency. You really well, need to know what they might not even know what freelancer is. No. They might they not might even know, know that, that that's a thing. You know, that, that freelancers do this type of work. Yeah. So having these kind of actual conversations with people and just listening, mm. listening to what people are saying, how they talk about things, um, the terms they use. Like, you know, if you're in business communities where, the you know, you've got a bunch of businesses talking about, their social media or their Facebook ads. What terms are they using? Go and look at like influencers in your sector and go and see what questions people are asking on those posts. What are they saying? What are they asking? Because then you can create content that will answer their problems, but also hopefully show up if they're searching for those questions as well. So It's about just having your ears and eyes open and doing research and continuing to do that. There's no point saying, oh, great. This is great podcast. I'm going to go do this now. And then not looking at it again for another three years. It's constantly changing. And and obviously your offers and your services will constantly change. The content you're creating, hopefully, is constantly changing. And so you want to keep on top of this. You need this to be part of what you do. Yeah. And I think it's important to say, like, we all know because it's been something that's been in the background of our businesses, whether we've done it or not, but we all know how important SEO is on a website. Mm. We know that SEO on social is going to become as important as as that. It's Mm. something you really need to start to embrace. And it starts with that research. But that when you do that research, that can help you with three really, really important things in your business. Laura's just touched on one of them in that it will help you to plan your content because you will see what people are searching for. You can make sure that you create content that answers those search terms specifically and you can continue to answer those search terms. You know, there's no point in just creating one post that answers a search term. You want to continue trying and trying and trying to make sure that you are the one that shows up in when somebody's searching for that. So that's one thing that it will really help you to do because you'll see how many searches are there for these terms and how are people already showing up for those things. So that will help you. People don't need to sit here going, oh gosh, you know, this isn't something else I I need to do. 
that you need to flip that mindset and think, Mm. oh God, this is brilliant because this is going to give me direction and content ideas. You know, we all sit there going, oh, what should I talk about on my socials this week? You shouldn't have that. You're doing this already, but you're just not paying attention to why (laughs) this content is showing up to you. This is a good thing. This is a positive thing. This is going to focus us. This is going to mean our content is like exactly what it needs to be you know saying what exactly what it needs to say you know this is a positive thing people definitely (laughs) positive mental attitude the second thing that it will help you with and laura's already touched on this a little bit as well sorry really (laughs) understanding your audience because you can learn so much from your keyword research you will see what content is popular so you, like we've said, you might think that people are looking for one thing, but it turns out they're looking for something else. And we had an example that we talked about on um, our masterclass, which was if you were working with a company who sold battery packs, like that you ch- charge your phone with, you would probably think that the keyword that you want to show up for is battery packs. But actually what people are probably searching for is how do I charge my phone when I'm at a festival? Or how do I charge my phone on a long journey? Things like that. And that's what you want to be showing up for. So you mm. really need to find out what it is that your audience is actually looking for. You might think that they're looking for Instagram tips, but it might not be that at all. It might be they're looking for how to edit an Instagram reel. So you need to really like understand. And the more you understand your audience, the better because you can create way better content. Yeah. Which kind of leads on to the third thing, doesn't it? <laughs> when you know your audience, guess what yeah. you can do? You can <laughs> you can create amazing products and services because you know what they yeah. need. And you can position it's not just about creating new things. It's that no. actually once you've once you've really understood what people are asking and searching for, you can probably tweak and refine and adapt potentially what services that you've already got that really, really addresses the the problem that they're telling you via their search terms. So yeah. but yeah, it can also make you realise that actually loads and loads of people are asking, how do I edit videos for Instagram Reels? It's like, well, okay, how what can you do? Yes, obviously you can create some content about that, but maybe you could put a resource together and make some money out of that. Or maybe you could do a mini course or a masterclass. You know, there are, you know, you as social media marketers have such a wealth of knowledge that can help businesses at all levels to solve these these small problems. And yes, these people might not be looking for a social media uh, marketer at the moment to help them with their business, but They might come to you because you've put together a great resource on how to edit videos. They then get to know you. They follow you. Later that, you know, year, you might say you now have capacity for one more client. And by that point, they are chomping at the bit to work with you because you've positioned yourself so well in your content. So, you know, we have to think outside the box a little bit. Don't just think what keywords can I use to help find a a management client or be that's fine to do that but don't just do that think about how else can I find people who are at a different point in their business journey that I might be able to nurture and kind of keep sweet over a period of time that when they do want to outsource it or are at a position to invest more money you're the person that they come to so you've got to think of the long game as well with this kind of research and your keywords yeah definitely So just a quick couple of places that you can actually optimize your content then once you've done that research and you know what people are um, searching for, you need to make sure that obviously those keywords and those search terms are are in your content. So, and there's a few different places that you want to make sure that they are. The most obvious one and the one that probably you're already doing already or trying to is in your bio on all of the platforms um, or your about section on the platform, depending where it is. You want to make sure that you've got those search terms in there, but should we just run through a couple of the other ones? Yeah. Yeah. So you need to think about your captions. And I think that's one of the most obvious places I think people will Mm. probably um, think to hope, well, hopefully to use their keywords. So making sure that you're using your full keyword um, in that caption and be as descriptive as possible. But it's got to, it's worth saying that you can't just try and squeeze and shoehorn these keywords in. It's still got to read well, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But if, for example, you want your post to be discovered for the best apps for editing Instagram reels, then you need to make sure that that specific phrase is in your caption of your post. So if you just were to pull out Instagram reels as your keyword, then obviously your 
you're going to end up with your content being in a really competitive pool of everybody who uses the term Instagram Reels. So make sure you're using that term that is aligned with what you know from your research people are actually looking for. Yeah, because you need to remember why you're doing this is to tell the algorithm what your content is about so it can serve it up to the people who are searching mm. for those terms. So that's why in a video, you should try and make sure that that term is in the words that you say, but it should also be on the words that are on the screen so that when somebody searches, they can see immediately that your piece of content answers those questions. And when it comes to like the words that you say, you're going to want to say them, but you need to also make sure that you edit the subtitles so that they're spelt correctly so that the algorithm, again, understands exactly what that content is about. And then if you've got like um, images or graphics, you should also try and make sure that those search terms are in your alt text. But you need to be very careful with this. You need to make sure that it's only there mm -hmm. if it makes sense. Because remember that your alt text is there to describe an image to somebody who can't see it so that they can understand what somebody who can see it is actually seeing. So if it fits in that description, and it should do because your image should probably make sense <laughs> to what you're talking about, then you put it in. If not, don't because alt text is, is there to help people who can't see. It's not for keyword stuffing. But it yep. will make sense if you have got a graphic or a cover image that relates back to that search term. Yeah, same with pins as well. Yeah, Making sure it's on those graphics it's, makes it a lot easier for people to find. Also, when it comes to hashtags... Hashtags are still useful in terms of letting the algorithm know what your content is. So you need to make sure that your hashtags are really relevant, they're really targeted, and they're really connected to your search terms, your keywords. But don't go and create a hashtag just because of your keyword if you can't find one. Just use the ones that are already there and people are already using. And yeah, people might not be searching for those hashtags, but it will help the platform to categorise what that content is. Yeah. So just remember that you can't even think about optimizing for SEO on social media or anywhere else without carrying out that research to see what people are actually searching for. So do make that a priority for your business and also for your clients too. And if you're in the inner hub, then go and dive into the masterclass where we go into much more detail on how you can actually carry out this research. And if you're not a member yet, then don't worry. You can join us on the waiting list at thetwolauras.com forward slash inner hub. And we're back same time, same place next week. So make sure you hit follow or subscribe wherever you are listening. So the episode lands in your player automatically and you don't miss out. So we'll see you then. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ta-ra.